So having a bit of a look at friction drives, and so far we've made this one, it's pretty straightforward. And what I've been going on a lot about is the force at the normal. And the normal is basically a straight line that touches the wheel. Imagine it's the road and the car is sitting there. The way the car wheel touches the road at 90 degrees to that, that's the normal. So here's our wheel, the road is right here from the center straight the way down, 90 degrees, that's the normal and that's where we need to apply the force in order to make a friction drive work and I've been banging on about that because it's important. Now of course we don't only use uh, wheels which are basically cylinders, we can use spheres. This is a ping pong ball and yes it's what I'm going to use but where is the normal on a ping pong ball? Now you can imagine it just like a cylinder if you think of it flattened out. And if we sit it on the road, of course, then straight the way down in that line, just like a wheel, is the normal. Now, the line that it touches, if you like, the road that the wheel is sitting on is called the tangent. And 90 degrees to the tangent is the normal. If we can keep those ideas in our heads, it becomes much, much easier. Because let's look at the wheel on the side. That way, where it's touching the road and we have the normal force applied here, dead easy to visualize, but it's the same if I do that. Now, the road is like it's tilted, like going down a hill or up a hill, and it's at an angle. It's still a tangent. Normal is 90 degrees to the tangent, and it comes through here. So if we have a sphere, and the sphere is rubbing where my thumb is, the force has to be applied at an angle where my finger is. If we can do that, we can also rotate the ball in any direction we want and have a friction drive that can wobble about. And that can be extraordinarily useful. Now, in order to do that, of course, we need something for the ball to run in. What it needs to run in is a raceway. Right, we're actually in Tinkercad, not for any particular reason, I just thought it'd be nice to do in Tinkercad for a change, but we can do exactly the same thing in FreeCAD. Because in both Tinkercad and FreeCAD, there's a primitive available called Taurus. If we pull Taurus onto the workbench, we'll get some sliders that we can actually adjust to create the Taurus that we want. If we move the side so it's maximum and the step so it's maximum, we'll get a nice smooth Taurus. Now this is the radius of the Taurus cube. We want it to be 40 because our ping pong ball, there you go, is 40 by 40 by 40. So we make the radius of the tube 20. That'll make the diameter of the tube 40. Now it goes a little bananas because the radius of the actual torus is at 7.5. We want it at 40. We want it at 40 because now we've got 40 plus 40 plus 40 making 120 across and that will fit our ping pong ball really rather nicely. If we highlight the torus and make it a hole we can use that as a subtraction event. Again in FreeCAD you'd do exactly the same thing only your boolean operation would be subtract. Now we get a cylinder. We want to make our cylinder 120 by 120. So first of all, let's smooth our cylinder out. There we go. Make it 120 by 120. And it is already 20 high, which is, of course, half the height of our ping pong ball. So fine. Now center them to each other. And then merge them. And what we get is our raceway. Of course, we've got this section here, but we can use that section as a top section. What we need to remove at the moment is that section. So we can get another cylinder. We can smooth that cylinder, let's say 80 by 80. Again, center them and then merge them. And there we go. We've got our bottom raceway that this will sit in rather nicely. Copy that, get rid of the outer ring by using mergers, and you'll get a sort of conic section that'll be the top. Of course, we still need to beef it out a little bit to size, but that's only by joining cylinders. So the raceway is really easy to make. So I've beefed it up with some cylinders, obviously, but there's our raceway right there that our ping pong ball will fit in, and that top cone that I isolated goes on the top like that. So they're just pulled from the torus and the cylinder put together with a few extra cylinders to thicken everything up a bit. Now, at the bottom here, you'll see there's an indentation. And there's an indentation because, like on this, we're going to put springs on it. 
If we put springs on it and press everything down, what's going to happen is it's going to lock into place. So what I've got are a couple of thrust bearings. Now these are 11 millimeters by 47 millimeters, 42 millimeters by um, 25 millimeters. They're just what I happen to have. You can do anything with those. They fit nicely in there. We've got a different size thrust bearing. We'll change the size of that hole and that hole is just a cylinder made into a hollow and then merged with the conic section. I've also put a hole in it to take an axle. That will drop into here and then here we've got another thrust bearing that sits in there exactly the same size. There we go, like that to take the thrust of the spring so that thrust only acts on the ball where we want it to act. Because what we're missing at the moment is a carrier. Okay, the carrier itself is another one of those really easy things to make. Let's get a cylinder and let's make the sides nice and smooth. Remember we made this 80 by 80, so to give it a little bit of leeway, we'll make that 79 by 79. And we're going to make it 40 high, so it'll come a little bit above where that ping pong ball actually is. Center it to here so we can have a look at it. And there you go, it's sitting quite nicely. Now, the first thing we need to do is hollow out the inside. So let's get our cylinder hollow. We actually need it about 10 millimeters off the floor. And we're going to need it something like, well, this is uh, basically 80 by 80. So let's call this 70 by 70. And that will give us a five millimeter wall all the way around. And we can make it some height like 40. As long as it's bigger than that cylinder, it doesn't really matter merge them to uh, sorry center them to each other and then merge them and what we get is a hollow down carrier now of course we want a space cut in it for these actual balls to do that click on the ping pong ball click on the bottom bit there that ping pong ball goes right to the edge here so it's contained within the bottom of that uh, cylinder there so what we want to do is duplicate it and then rotate it by 120 degrees because we want three of them Repeat that, and we get three in place. We've also got three of these, which we don't need, so let's get rid of two of them, leaving us with one. Now this is 40 by 40, and that's just a little bit um, too small. We need a bit of leeway, so copy one of these here, drag it to one side, make it a hole, and this time make it 41 by 41, by 41 and we'll have half a millimeter all the way around leeway once we center it on that so duplicate it hold up the shift key highlight that click the center button and center it to there so we centered it in three areas we'll do exactly the same thing now if we click on that we'll actually get the outside one at 41 so hold down the shift key click on all three click on the slide guide the center guide there and then merge them when we've done that we can pull that off and we have ourselves a carrier to that we can add the central cylinder holes for the axle so now we've got our bottom brace where with the thrust bearing we've got our center guide equally has a hole in it and it fits nicely in there the ping pong balls drop in there we go and our top cone goes on there again with another thrust bearing right on there like that so the whole thing stacks up and then there's this plate that goes on top because that plate is going to take the pressure of the spring so the spring pressure goes down the axle doesn't connect that plate but does connect with the cone and we need an axle here out of the planet carrier then we need a bit of support in order to put this whole thing together the axles are right there we'll feed those in and we have three supports and the three supports basically bang into these three holes. So there's our base unit with its thrust bearing in place. The other parts of the thrust bearing just rest on top. There is our carrier and it's now got its axle glued in. The axle drops in there onto the thrust bearing like that. So it's nice and easy to turn. Of course, our ping pong balls then drop into there like that. So we've got our actual ping pong balls in place. Then this drops on the top there. It has another thrust bearing that goes in here like that our pressure plate goes on top like that and then our spring goes around there like that now we need to compress that spring 
in order to compress that spring we have this plate here that fits on there and then we give a bit of pressure on it to bring it down with pressure on the spring. And that's it all glued together. It's actually pretty cool. Now it works both ways. If I take this and do this one turn, we get about a quarter of a turn of the output. And if I take that and make that the input, then one turn of that will give us four turns of that. The amount of torque it's able to deliver, remember, is dependent on the strength of that spring. Adding more balls won't really help. And changing the spring makes a difference, but adding balls doesn't. So there we go, a ping pong ball friction based planetary gear system that actually has a quite reasonable in step up, step down, depending which way you want to put it. Now, these things are really easy to build, and of course that's one of the thing about friction based systems. They're easy and cheap to build. It's clearly not very far from the CVT once you get it to something like this. This one, of course, I'll put onto Thingiverse should anybody want these files to play around with. But I'd, we've gone through the sort of difficult bits of how to draw this. So I don't think it would be uh, too much of a challenge should anybody feel like adapting it to suit their own particular needs. Anyway. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.